Hello, people of YouTube, cutting the nets of the interwebs. It's about 2 a.m. and I wanted something to do. I need to get to bed, but I'm having trouble sleeping. Um, well, part of that is not getting in bed, but even if I did, I'd be squirming around. But I wanted to give myself something to do, so I just got this thing today. It is a cleaver that weighs close to three pounds and it has a nice hardwood handle full tang stainless steel rivets there and everything um and i have this old walking stick i made that i fire hardened and unfortunately, when I fire hardened this thing, I was testing out the club end on it, and it happened to be hollow. I had no idea. So it did break up here when I hit something that cracked about to here. But I want to demonstrate in this video how hard these fire hardened walking sticks really are. So, first thing I'm going to start with is just... A larger diameter piece of wood you know this is a this is a hardwood handle from a tool that I just used as scrap because the the tool was junk but it's a hardwood handle nonetheless you see it's larger diameter than this fire hardened walking stick so I want you to see how how hard this wood is so so watch I'm gonna hit this hard I, I hit stuff extremely hard. So I'm gonna hit this hard. So one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> that piece you see saw fly off was from the top of it where it's already broken. See? That's how hard I'm hitting it. And no damage, no dents or anything. Those are just nick marks from a knife I was doing earlier, just trying to take little nicks off of it. So, all right, now I'm gonna step it up. So, I am hitting that hard enough to where if this was not fire hardened, it would split that wood. It would, no pun intended. So, now I'm gonna step it up a notch. I'm gonna use the back side of the cleaver, which anyone that has any understanding of close to three pounds of steel they swung as hard as something much lighter. It's still hardwood, but it's much lighter. You would think that something close to three pounds of steel, you know, weighted in a way to where you get the maximum impact from the back. It's a cleaver that's meant to go through bone, you know, for cutting up meat and stuff. It's, it's made to chop through bone. Um, but take the back side of it first. And then we'll step it up. So I hit this stuff hard. So don't try this stuff. Oh, me holding this with my left hand. This is not something I recommend anybody to do that's never done it before because if you're not prepared for it with your left hand, then you could hurt yourself. So, all right, let's see. So I'm going to hit this thing hard. So see how many times I can hit it really hard. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow. All right, so I got a small crack. I was only expecting that to happen. But that was eight extremely hard hits, you know. And that's just like a surface layer that came loose. Because this is like layered wood. It, it's like circular layers. But. Let's see if that compromised how tough it is. Nope. It's still plenty tough. It just had a surface layer. Kind of come up right there. But it, it's, it's not anything serious. So. Alright. So. Now this thing is sharp. It has close to a 25 degree edge, surprisingly. I would think it would have a more robust edge to have better edge retention, but they did some kind of heat treatment to the steel where it's it's 
it doesn't need to be a more stout edge it, it's it holds up just fine so now I'm going to try to show you the blade going into it to see if this can do it now I want to demonstrate something doing this so keep in mind this thing is close to three pounds okay three pounds of steel now watch I'm going to demonstrate something real quick so you notice how I stopped right when I tapped it? You know, I can usually stop it before I hit it. And I'm not slowing down. I'm simply stopping before it hits. But the reason that's important is if I manage to break this thing or chop through it mostly or all the way, um, I can stop this blade shortly after it goes through it if I do it right. So... I'll demonstrate. This is why I just say do straight swings and not curves. So there you go. Don't try this at home holding something with your left hand like this when you're done before because you can hurt yourself. So let's see. So hit number one into this fire hardened walking stick. Fun times. Three, two, one. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now you can see it hasn't shattered yet. It's just taking pieces of wood out, and you think that much compromise it should break by now. So let's start on the other side. Just to give it a chance to break easier. Let's just start on the other side in the same place, which is about here. So I'll just mark a little spot right here. So I can see where to hit it. See? Right there. So. Alright, let's try. Let's see if I can get it through this. So, I'm showing you how hard these fire hardened walking sticks can be. Um, now, if I had a normal walking stick I didn't care about that was messed up that I could demonstrate this to, I guarantee you it would not take this many blows. It would crack probably on the second blow. So, here we go. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now you notice I don't have to slow the blade down because look, I can I can stop like right when it taps it or right before it without slowing it down. So so almost yeah. Don't try this. Um. All right. One good hit. Two good hit. See, that's why it's important to practice doing straight swings. So two purpose video. But here's your proof right here. This isn't even a very good one. This is proof right here that a fire hardened walking stick can hold up to a very heavy sharp blade with quite a few blows intentionally trying to break it before even it even starts to crack through the middle. So, you know, anybody that tells you that, you know, a walking stick is useless if somebody's trying to use something on you, um, if you fire harden it, um, they don't know what they're talking about because this wasn't even a very good one and it took an insane amount of blows from a blade before it broke now i have had swords that if i were to take the back end of this thing and hit it into the edge or the side of a sword blade the swords i've had these are not junk swords they're not super expensive but they're not junk if I were to hit this into the side or into the blade side of the sword enough, it would either break or bend. And definitely leave a huge gouge in the steel. 
So, yeah. Yeah, these things are no joke. So, you know, that also goes to show you that um, walking sticks are underestimated uh, in their uses because, like, of course, you know, if you need some stability when you're hiking, a nice light wooden walking stick is very helpful. You know, you can use it to defend yourself, you know, even when you're walking on trails and stuff, if there's a snake in front of you, the safest thing I've always found to do when I came across a snake when I'm walking through the woods and stuff, it's a walking snake, is just pick, put it under the snake and just kind of fling it far enough away to where, you know, it won't bite me, but I'm not hurting it. And it'll feel threatened if I get too close, so I don't want to get bit. Even if it's not poisonous, I can get sick. But even simple stuff like that, just getting a snake away from you to where... You know, it doesn't feel threatened enough to bite you. you know, or it could be a poisonous one you really want to get far away from you. Um, and if, you know, it most likely never happened, but like an animal attack is more likely, but it's, it's not very likely to happen, but it, it does. You know, um, or if a person attacks you, like, I guarantee you, if a person were to try to do you harm, and you had a, a nice fire-hardened walking stick, like this one's even cracked on top and it took that many blows. You know, if somebody was mean to do you harm, and you just had a walking stick on you, especially a fire-hardened one, um, it then doesn't matter what they have in their hands. You know, when it comes to you having a walking stick, they're not going to be able to break it. You know. They could grab both sides and hit it over their leg. And the most they're going to do. Is bruise their leg whenever they do it. Because you saw how many sharp blows. From this piece of steel it took. Before a crack even started going down the middle. You know. It, it took a lot. A, a lot of force. I don't swing light in this stuff. I swing very hard. Like, I'll, I'll demonstrate. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm no lightweight when it comes to swinging stuff. So, yeah, close to three pounds of steel, you know, sharpened, you know, and weighted properly. On this thing made to chop through bone and that's how how much it took before it broke this this walking stick that wasn't even a very good one now if it was one that was not cracked and it was a good one i bet you it would have taken way more blows to break than that you know i think mainly what made it break was you know it took off enough wood to where it's finally started getting weak enough to where it could crack it and that's the thing that made it break like if you're holding this free-handed and somebody's swinging something into it it doesn't matter what it is they're swinging into it they could swing a sword into it you know if this thing being braced on both sides you know is not chopping through it with repeated blows Intentionally, both sides supported. You know, think about it. So, even if somebody's swinging a sword or machete or something at it, like, it's not going to cut through it. You know, don't believe the movies. So, yeah, make yourself a nice walking stick. Uh, look up how you fire harden them. And the cool thing about it is, at least here in the United States, about anywhere you go, uh, a walking stick is just seen as a walking aid, and that's exactly what it is. And if you ever did need to defend yourself, like, it's just a stick you use to help sports are walking around. You know, so, I, guess, I know I'm clumsy, so it's nice to have a walking stick. Now, would you rather hit somebody with a, a stick to discourage them from hurting you, or do something serious and get in trouble with the law? I'd rather hit him with a stick than get in serious trouble with the law. You know, even if the law got involved because I hit him with a stick, which most likely would happen, unless they really didn't want to get caught. Like, if they were trying to do me harm, there probably would not be any police involved. You know. 
unless they wanted to make something up, I'd just be like, well, yeah, I hit him with a stick because they were being threatening to me. You know, they were threatening to physically harm me or do something, you know. But, okay, doggy, thanks for watching the video. I just wanted something to do. Oh, oh also, uh, since the drama queen that wrote this won't make it this far in the video, uh, because, you know, if they're that much of a drama queen, you know, they're, they're not going to have the attention span to watch this video to this point when they hate my guts for no other reason other than, you know, I tell them the truth about how self-destructive they are and they just hate hearing it, you know. Um, yeah, this person on a video I had uploaded just showing... What was it my Cold Steel SRKC knife? I got real cheap, like $29. Uh, they were riding on, the, they were trying to like be insulting about what I look like and stuff. And I simply replied to him, you could, you could probably see the comment. I simply replied to him, what is it about making, you know, what is it about making uh, fun of other people's, um, misfortunes in your eyes you know and I put in quotations that you know um, what is about it that, that you enjoy or I see something like that and I'm like I, I'm curious and they like wigged out and they just kept wigging out and wigging out and wigging out and I'd say like the symbols response to they wig out like it was it was ridiculous and you know, a lot of times these people will do this stuff simply because you are trying to take care of yourself or you're doing better and they hate it. And they're trying to tear you down because they're miserable because they're making themselves miserable. But they don't want to hear that they're making themselves miserable. They want an easy way out and they look at you working to get better. It's like, how did you get so easily get better? Like how? It wasn't easy, dingus. You're just so obsessed with blaming everything that you, any of that time you spend blaming everything else and making excuses and complaining you know, if you had just made a little bit of effort you know you might be doing better yourself but no you gotta gripe and complain to somebody else well, what are you doing better like I'm miserable because I make myself miserable but I don't want to hear it like I want a quick f fix how did you get better and I can't I hate you that's what they that's what they behave like. Like they're just pathetic. Yeah, so I think the last thing I wrote to him before they stopped writing stupid crap was uh thank you for letting me know that what you really like online um uh, due to the fact that you're safe behind a computer screen. Yeah. And they stopped replying. So Thanks for watching this dumb video. I just wanted something to do. It's like two, two almost two twenty a.m. now, so. Okay, Dobby, take care. Make yourself walk a stick.